pal. Hey, you want to jump up here? Well, you know what? Your people are out there. You want to see your people? There they are. Oh, hey, well, thank you very much. All right, let's talk. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch and Far Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center in Far West Texas, along with Cascade the Wonder Dog, and we're still wondering what good he is. But he's here with us. And what's wrong with this picture? Well, if you followed any of my videos and you know a little bit about a little bit about the place, something's wrong. Something's missing here. The travel trailer. Ah, oh, it's gone. That's what this vlog is about. We have had the most wonderful guest here for the last week that helped me with a lot of the work we had to do around here. And I thought I'd share a little bit of it with you. He created more work than he did, but it's good work that got created because now we can finish the walls for the house and a whole lot of other things. I'm going to get behind the camera and show you some of the stuff we did and explain why and what good it's going to be. Well, let me get down from here if I can figure out how. Well, right here is where the pit used to be. That big pit that I dug to make a water cistern and then had to abandon that because I was concerned about my legs. Well. It had to be filled in before I can finish the greenhouse. He filled that in for me. Didn't take too long either. That was probably the hardest job was filling in the pit. Moved the fence back for the horse so that I can build my wall here and then I've got to do some moving and building for the, uh, for the goats. Um, but I can do it now because, well, he did the work for me. And I'm glad somebody did come to help me with the work because trying to save up the money to get a piece of equipment just for a couple days, um, I just wasn't able to. Uh, but we got a lot done. One of the things we did in, uh, uh, is we dug another pit back here for me to use as, well, a junk pit for the stuff that we just can't put in the walls for whatever reason. And also a fire pit because we live in the, uh, in, in the county of the never-ending fire ban out here. Let me show you some more of the stuff he did. He did a lot of work. Well, I'm not sure how loud the wind is because I can't hear it until I edit it, but I hope you can hear me just fine. Um, I'll point out some of the stuff from a distance here. Uh, if you get up close, I mean, it's just a bunch of earthwork right now until we start finishing it with uh, some rocks and get some rain to, to knock the dust down. But um, where I'm pointing here, out of camera range is where we used to have our old fire pit and uh, and um, trash pit. We dump our dog uh, our dog crap in it and that. He filled that in nicely and flattened it out for me. But over here is what I kind of wanted to show you. I had when we first moved here, I was going to build us an earth ship out of tires and collected the tires. Well, it was a lot of work, but then I got injured and of course I couldn't swing the um, the sledgehammer enough to make much progress on it. So we'd like left the abandoned earth ship right here where I'm pointing, where that uh, fresh lighter colored gouge is. He pushed all of that into a rather deep um, but small arroyo that we had just out of your sight. Pushed that all in there. Uh, the tires were full of dirt, so they pushed full of dirt, and then he mounted a whole bunch of dirt up to make a check dam in that arroyo. That pulled the water up on our property, which is what you always want to do. I'm going to get a little closer because I'm not sure of the wind. That's what you always want to do is slow the water down so it stays on your land and infiltrates into the soil instead of running away. Got that check dam done. It's great. I'm happy to have that. Also, cleaned up a little bit in this area, but you can see kind of going that way towards the garage, he built my secondary uh, driveway. So I can now take the truck right in the garage. We're going to be getting Debbie's father's car soon. That's been always the plan, but he gave up driving. He's 87. And when he decided to give up driving, we were going to get the car, and that's what we built the garage for. So he built me a nice driveway right in there. We have to line it with rock, and like I say, all this has to be finished, but the rougher earthwork, the stuff that would have taken me years by shovel, uh, are done. So we're real excited about that. Did a couple more things, and I'm going to show you those right now. Well, I hope the glare on the windshield of 200K isn't blinding you, but we've had an ongoing problem. You're sitting right now on Earthship Drive. Our property sits on the corner of Earthship Drive and Smiling Dog Trail. Our address is Smiling Dog Trail. That's the main entrance to our property. 
However, people seem to get confused. They pull over the hill on Smiling Dog Trail. They look at this little jog and they figure this is the main entrance to the house. Well, it's more of an irritation than anything else. They'd park, they park halfway down the driveway and walk way up. Then I've got to walk out the front door all the way around down the driveway to talk to them. The biggest problem we had is Federal Express, they deliver here, just so does United Parcel Service. But the Federal Express drivers, this is a contract system, so they take and put it out to the lowest bidder. The lowest bidder then hires people for minimum wage to come and deliver the packages. The problem we had was the Federal Express drivers, they were recent immigrants to this country from Guatemala or wherever. Uh, and they apparently aren't used to a building as big as this. It's 100 feet wide. So they say that they see the utility room door, the mechanical room door. They'd come and toss my packages by the mechanical room door. I don't walk past that each and every day, and I'm calling saying, where's my packages? They look delivered. Uh, it was a real problem. So what we did, as you can see behind me here, I put rocks here so you can't get a big... Um, um, I put signs that said wrong way, do not enter, and front entrance that away, way up at the mechanical room door. I put bigger rocks, even though she was stepping over the rocks that were there and weaving between um, uh, some really prickly yuccas. I put a sign that said front entrance that away. Hopefully that'll stop people from coming in this way and will come in the proper way where it's a lot prettier and, and that's the way it was built. Well, I mentioned he built one check dam. He built a second check dam for me that I'm a little excited about. Right down here is the check dam that we built several years ago to slow the water down that came down the driveway and was starting to enter this arroyo. That check dam has a, um, it has a culvert pipe, so when this water fills up, it overflows into the arroyo. But then it went right out the arroyo into the main arroyo, this little arroyo into the main arroyo which we own the whole thing, 12 acres of Arroyo that we can't use, but the water would go out there. Plus I had, oh, I can't even tell you how many grease woods and cat's claws growing in there. So he came in and cleared the grease wood and class, cat's claws out and built a second check dam down here to stop and hold that water. Now there's not a lot of water, but we'd like to hold all the water we can. It does make the, the area greener. Now also by clearing that out, Set, um, he's, he's cleared out where I need to put my solar panels. We're going to move all the solar panels as we do the remodel in the kitchen. Move the solar panels down that arroyo slope a little bit so that they, uh, they don't um, block our view of the desert. And also they'll face the optimum way, which if you, if you guys don't know the optimum placement for a uh, stationary um, solar panel array, stationary array, the optimum placement is 200 degrees from due north, which is just, um, well, it's slightly west of south, which is exactly the direction the arroyo faces. But also, whatever latitude you're at, if you're at, like, we're at 31 and a half latitude, the angle has to be 31 and a half degrees. If you're at 45, up near Minnesota, you're up at that angle. That's the optimum. Well, we can now place our new 48 volt system at the optimum um, position and keep it from messing with our view of, of the desert. I'll stay behind the camera here. This is our campground. One of our work exchange guests had come by here and he had carefully raked and placed a whole lot of rocks to make me four uh, campsites, which was very nice. But when we had the piece of equipment here, I wanted to get six campsites done and I wanted to move the travel trailer up to the campground. So as you can see, we're looking at one campsite. There's the second one. Then this little road here goes down to three more that are tent uh, campsites. And then you come over here to the fire pit, which is at uh, uh, old Ford Van Hood uh, fire pit and grill. The Ford Van Hood is over the grill. We have a big RV spot that an RV can pull in and then uh, back out very easily. And you can see the travel trailer's new home is out here. The travel trailer is going to be the toilet, shower, kitchen, and community room for all the campers. And we'll do a roof over over that. 
uh, and a front porch and make it really really kind of nice for folks to come and see it pretty much faces sunrise and sunset so if you're sitting at the porch on the porch of it you'll be able to see sunrise and sunset that should help get more campers here because it's been kind of uh, difficult for them to have to walk all the way back and around the garage into the bathroom um, uh, in the guest bathroom so by moving the trailer it gives me a nice little community center uh, I was showing you the travel trailer what I didn't show you was how we got it out it had to be pulled backwards from where it was sitting because there was just no way to put it up front we had to pull it backwards and with the help of my friend the fellow that I worked for for five years he suggested that we tie three or four tires together in a stack, tie them so that they you know, wouldn't move, then take that and jack the tongue of the trailer up as high as we could, slip those tires underneath, tie the tires off, throw some chains around the back of the uh, travel trailer, and pull it backwards. As the weight went down on the tongue, it would compress the tires, and the tires would drag along nicely over a bigger area. Um, and hopefully bring it straight backwards. Now I won't tell you how it did, I'm going to show you uh, in this next segment.
the travel trailer and I just have to tie it down we're off to the races and speaking of off to the races let's go to the next segment I'm standing in front of the dam the section of the dam where the most water would always come through if we got a mild rainfall most of the water would just run this way we never got water down there unless we got a big big rainstorm but we never got a tremendous amount of water through here my estimate is this will hold even with the four foot dam there it'll hold nine million gallons of water and we've never had that volume come through here because i know some of you are saying wait a minute wait a minute a few years ago weren't you laughing at that guy because i've got that fellow that's two and a half miles to my south southeast the guy that's got the blog and the live stream that's going constantly showing rabbits hopping around and um, his dream his serious dream was to dam up his arroyo, which is a lot deeper, and not as big, but a lot deeper. And he was going to dam up his arroyo so he could have jet ski rentals and have an annual jet ski race out here in the middle of the desert. He figured that would get him extra publicity. So he spent thousands and thousands of dollars building a dam, only to have it blow out at the first big rainfall. Well, it was poorly engineered, and... and terribly terribly executed the, the equipment operator needs to go back to the fry station at mcdonald's and start training again because that dam was horrible this dam is not designed to be anything fancy it very well might blow out but all we're trying to do is again slow the water down if over time we can impound some water here that'd be great and it gives the wildlife something to come and draw off of unlike the other clown that's close to the first one who decided well I've created all this water but I don't want the donkeys digging, uh, drinking it so he built barbed wire fencing around his little pits so the donkeys can sit there and look but they can't get the water this is this these, this dam and this water this whole environment here is going to be for the native vegetation and wildlife now this whole area is littered with ruins of dams that people have tried to build. So I don't have any illusions about it really working, but we've done the best we can. It's about eight feet thick, four feet wide, and we just hope it'll work. We're gonna wait for the first rainfall. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna video that because he wants to see it, and ever, I wanna see it, you probably wanna see. Are we gonna hold water or is my dam gonna blow out? But I didn't spend thousands and thousands of dollars, and I didn't write to the New York Times and um, all the uh, TV stations telling them that I'm creating um, Lake Field Lab. I didn't do that like he did. But at any rate, we'll see what happens with that. That's a vlog of what's going on around here, and I hope uh, hope that brings you up to date. I've got a couple more videos coming up, and we're going to build, we're going to finally get to some how to or how I did it videos. Um, now that we have a whole bunch of work to do, and I've although I've stopped taking work exchange guests off of Woof and those other sites. That doesn't mean if you're a follower of what we're doing here and you want to come and visit, maybe you would like to work exchange that we won't take you. We certainly will. And that you just have to email me or telephone me and talk to me about that. And until we do another video, I guess that's the end. So this is Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center. Damn. Saying, see you later.